Joining us now, Jatania Kand uh, Kandhari. She's deputy CIO of the Solutions and Multi-Asset Group at Morgan Stanley Investment Management. <clears throat> she joins us from the Game Forum, the largest student-run financial conference hosted by uh, Quin Quinnipiac uh, University. That's an interesting call. Um, it's like the developed nations, I guess we've messed things up so much, we might as go to where, <laughs> let's go to where uh, uh, there, there's uh, some potential for real, real growth from much lower levels, I guess, of, of development, emerging markets. Are you able to hear me, uh, Titania? I don't think so. Yes, I am. Oh, there she is. Okay. Okay. She must have just heard. In, in a nutshell, why do, you, uh, why do you think emerging markets will be the place versus the more developed uh, markets in the world? Why is it finally time? Sure. So emerging markets the last decade uh, had their worst performance since 1930s. So the relative performance starting point looks very interesting. More importantly, all of this monetary excess, fiscal excess that we're seeing in the developed world, emerging markets have not really had so much fiscal stimulus. Uh, Post-COVID, post all the QE that was done by the U.S. Uh, and some of the other development, developed markets, the emerging market central banks didn't really have that financial muscle. And even on the private sector side, the leverage hasn't picked up like we have seen. They've spent the last decade actually cleaning up, especially ex-China. And lastly, currencies are really cheap ex-China in that universe, and currencies can contribute uh, anywhere between 25 and 30 percent of returns for a dollar investors. So if you look at all of the performance valuation, uh, both at the equity level, at the currency level, and also the fundamentals related to the fiscal monetary side, the growth cycle, uh, emerging markets look very, very interesting at this stage of the economic cycle and the market cycle. It, it's interesting, Jatani, because I, <clears throat> I don't think you heard my, my original lead-in, and that's what I said. What, the developed nations have screwed things up so much, we can go to where they haven't had a chance to have all this prosperity and squander it by printing too much money and, and by, uh, you know, sort of uh, mortgaging our future with, with current consumption. And that's kind of, I think, what you just said. Does this, would you go all the way to frontier markets, Jatania, or is there the ones in between the most developed in the emerging markets versus frontier markets? Yeah, so, you know, this is a very heterogeneous asset class. So we, we don't think China at 32% of the index will continue to kind of punch above that weight. So we're diversifying even outside of China in other markets, uh, be it Southeast Asia, India, pockets of Latin America. But even in the frontier space, we're looking at uh, smaller countries, be it Vietnam uh, or even some markets in Africa, in the Middle East, uh, that look interesting. So it's a, it's a spectrum. Uh, I'd say some frontier, but a lot of the other uh, markets, even within the emerging market uh, benchmark, uh, are, have, have been whittled down uh, with this China punching above the 30, 35 percent level. Uh, so we are seeing opportunity pretty much across the board.